Well, hello, teachers and pianists. If we haven't met before, my name is Jana Williamson, and welcome to my home piano studio in the suburbs of Chicago. Today, I am answering the question, which Beethoven sonata or sonatas do you teach first? The other way you could think about what I'm going to talk about today is, which are the easiest Beethoven sonatas? So hang around to find out which ones are the easiest. Of course, I can't start off a conversation about this without talking about what kind of preparation your students need to have before they play Beethoven sonatas. Because of course, as anyone who has played the piano for longer than one minute knows, Beethoven didn't write anything that's truly easy. He did write a lot for solo piano, including dances and easier pieces like sonatinas. And then of course, the 32 Beethoven sonatas are considered one of the most important parts of the historical piano repertoire. These are very important works. They're very popular works amongst students and performers. And if you go to any piano series of recitals, you're likely to hear at least one Beethoven piano sonata. Part of the problem is that some of the sonatas that are most popular, such as the Pathétique or the Tempest, are very difficult works that I would classify as advanced. Perhaps you could talk about certain movements of those being early advanced, but they are certainly not intermediate pieces. And a lot of intermediate piano students really want to dive into those hard works without enough preparation. If you're not already familiar with my guide on how to evaluate repertoire difficulty, please check out the link to that in the description of this video and start there. It's a uh, PDF that will help you kind of look at an individual piece of music and evaluate just how difficult it is. And I'm going to briefly talk about that in today's examples as well. So besides, you know, making sure you get something that's the right level of difficulty for your student or for yourself, if you're doing some self-study, um, I just want to throw out some things that would be really great preparation before playing any of the Beethoven sonatas. Um, and so first of all, you would need to do a lot of preparation in easier classical era works. These would be things like Sonatinas by Clementi, especially, or Kulau. Um, Diabelli is another great one for preparation for Beethoven in particular. And of course, easy dances um, or other works by the most famous classical era composers, which would probably be Mozart and Haydn. Now Haydn also wrote several sonatinas and sonatas that are easier than the Beethoven sonatas. So those are another great way to prepare. I love teaching Haydn sonatas and uh, there are several that work really well for our intermediate to upper intermediate students. Um, and then some other things you may not be thinking about that are good preparation for playing Beethoven. Number one would be contrapuntal works by Bach. We don't think of Beethoven as writing contrapuntally, but he really does. He frequently throws in a uh, kind of a fugue-like section or some polyphonic parts in sonatas. And in order to have that left-hand independence in particular, it's really helpful to have done some things like Bach inventions or even easier works by Bach preludes and things from the notebook for Anna Magdalena. Um, on the other end of the spectrum, it's really helpful to have done a lot of 19th century romantic era literature. Things like Chopin waltzes and preludes and even the easiest nocturnes or other things by composers like Schumann and, and romantic masters because Beethoven, while he wrote most of his works within the classical era and based on that kind of style, he is the composer who pushes us into romantic sensibilities and his pieces do have a very wide range of emotion that is required. So while Chopin's style is vastly different than Beethoven's style, just the idea of being able to learn how to play expressively in something that is more emotional or requires much more range of dynamics and pedal and all those kinds of things is great preparation, even for learning the easiest Beethoven sonatas. And then just at a most basic level, it's really important that students who are embarking upon Beethoven sonatas know their scales, their arpeggios, chord inversions, um, anything that's like a basic technical warm-up that has trained your fingers and your arms and your technique, but also has taught you how to understand key signatures and basic chord harmony. Beethoven's writing is so harmonically based 
that you absolutely must understand at least some very basic theory in order to understand how he composes his piece. And I'll talk a little bit more about that um, later on, as well as in my other videos. I do have a video on the F major sonatina by Beethoven, and so I would uh, encourage you to look at that. He only wrote a few sonatinas, that one as well as the very famous G major sonatina that's the easiest sonatina. There's also a couple of Bond sonatinas that are very nice, and so I would recommend taking a look at those as well. All of those sonatinas were not published, so they all have um, a without opus catalog number, and so they don't carry maybe perhaps quite the significance that the sonatas do that were all published. Of course, we love them and they're great teaching pieces as well. Um, and just by way of my last little part of preparation, I did want to recommend a couple of particular books. There's this lovely book by Maurice Henson called At the Piano with Beethoven, which gives you several options for easier pieces than the sonatas, such as some of the bagatelles, um, a minuet, a romance, a rondo, um, a set of variations. Um, and those are all you know, very typical of Beethoven style. He liked to write rondos and variations. And then of course, Furelis is in this book as well. And then kind of in a similar vein, this is an old cover. The cover has been updated, but Willard Palmer's Beethoven, an introduction to his piano works. And again, part of the reason why I like these books is there's quite a bit of introductory material about how to do articulation, historical information, um, ornamentation, pedal, you know, all those things that we run into as major issues. Um, buying an inexpensive book like this and getting some of that really helpful pedagogical material, historical performance practice material from someone like Willard Palmer, um, you know, it's not the only resource, but it's a very inexpensive, great place to start. Plus, there's a lot of really good music in these books. So I do recommend those. As far as additions for the actual sonatas for study, particularly for students who may not be going on to be piano majors, I think there are a few options and these will all be linked in the description of this video. I frequently turn to the Dover edition, it comes in two volumes. It's inexpensive and it's a good edition. So that's a really good option. I personally usually work from my Henley, which as you can see is about to fall apart. Um, I don't usually ask students unless I think they might be college bound to buy um, such an expensive book as this. Another less expensive version would be the Alfred Masterworks done by Gordon, Stuart Gordon. Uh, that is an excellent um, edition as well. And so there are several options. Um, so take a look at, you know, price, what type of book you prefer, how many sonatas you want in one book, how serious is your student, how comfortable are you making decisions off of an urtext, do you want more editing that's more helpful for a less experienced pianist or student. So lots of questions you can ask when buying a book. All right, so let's get to it. I'm going to answer the question, what are the three easiest piano sonatas by Beethoven? Well, the first one is Opus 49, number two, in G major. The first movement sounds like this. And that's the first theme of that lovely opening statement. This is very traditional classical style. It's in a major key. It generally follows the rules of how you're supposed to do sonata form. Uh, the second theme is maybe a little bit playful or it still has a kind of a delicate feel though. Lots of articulation in there and two note slurs that give it that playful feel. Um, one other key element of this sonata which I really enjoy is all of the triplet rhythms. You get these scales later on. Students usually really enjoy those. You do have to be able to handle your triplet rhythm versus your duplet rhythm. And then this sonata has only two movements. The second one is marked tempo diminuetto, and so it's not super fast, which is a little bit unusual for a second movement of a two-movement sonata. 
It is in rondo form, and it's again very lovely and, and very much classical style. It's very lyrical for Beethoven, I think. Um, maybe more lyrical than some of his other pieces. So, so these two movements together really are the shortest and, in my opinion, the easiest sonata. So they're a great choice for a student um, who is doing their first sonata. I would put these on par with the last of Clementi's Opus 36. So Opus 36, number six, the D major. Oh, sorry. Very similar level to that. So if you have a student who's ready for that, then they might be ready for this as well. All right, number two in the three easiest Beethoven sonatas is the first one in this opus. So opus 49, number one. Instead of being in G major, we are in G minor. And this piece is definitely more melancholy, uh, slightly more romantic uh, sensibilities about the mood of this. So if you have a student who might turn their nose up at that very light and beautiful opus 49 number two, they might be more attracted to this, uh, particularly the first movement of this. Um, it has a lovely second theme, which is in B flat major here. Um, get a little bit more classical sounding for lack of a better word. There's a really interrupting kind of uh, development part of this with some fun little trills and then it's important to note that particularly the development of this you do need to have some octave technique. So um, this this piece needs to be prefaced with a little bit of work on octaves. You have the melody in octaves in measure 51. <laughs> They're supposed to be slurred as well so you can't just you know jump around you have to at least have a conversation with your student about are you going to pedal that or are you going to use some finger substitution 5-4 five, 5-4 four, five, four movement okay enough about that this is also just a two movement sonata so the second movement is in g major in the parallel major so it's much more happy it's also in compound time it's in 6-8 so it has much lighter more dance-like feel with this movement in my opinion is that it's very long and it is technically more challenging I think than the first movement so I've never had a student who just loved this movement like they loved the first movement maybe that's partly because of the character and I gave this first movement to students who really wanted something more melancholy I don't know um, but just a caution that that is long so if you're planning on doing this rondo repetitive piece you need to have a kid who has some stamina or that's what you're working on in this piece Okay, number three of the easiest piano sonatas is Opus 79, also in G major. So Beethoven really must have had G on the mind when he was, you know, writing some of these easier things, perhaps for a student or, um, you know, someone else. But this one has this very boisterous opening with octaves in the right hand. So again, your student needs to be ready to play some octaves here. You can't do this with a really tiny hand. very fast so again you need to be able to do this you know accompaniment pattern very quickly there's other things that move very quickly and the octaves it's very fun because of that students can oftentimes get hung up on playing this too heavily because they are thinking about the octaves there's some low chords later on so it needs to have a light um, fun boisterous feel amidst having a thicker texture than either of the opus 49 uh, movements uh, one other really just fun part to this, if you have a student who enjoys this, there's several crossovers in the development. We've gone to E major, so we have like that, and your left hand just gets to bounce all around over your right hand. 
Uh, very, very fun and technically difficult to do. Now this sonata is in three movements and the second one is definitely the easiest of the three and this is one that you oftentimes hear intermediate students play as a standalone movement without being without doing the first or the third and which is fine it's a beautiful piece it's definitely worth playing um, it's marked on Dante and it's in again the parallel it's in G minor it is also more melancholy like that opus 49 number one first movement to be a top music member I do have a video in my piece by piece series over there on this particular movement so go look that up the third movement is again a rondo form and is marked vivace back in G major very fun very light um, and if you play it up to tempo it's, it's difficult <laughs> also has quite a few polyrhythms. There is that main motive against triplets. And then later it gets even more complicated than that. I feel like, yes, there's these right hand triplets against left hand 16 notes. So it's... That's something that your student needs to have conquered polyrhythms on some level before they play this because it's not just two against three, it's three against four. Four, so 16th note fours against triplet threes, eighth note, you know, triplets. So just a caution there. It's not very long, so if your student enjoys difficult rhythmic things, and if they have some fingers to go along with it, um, this movement's only three pages and the sections go by very quickly, so it can be really fun for a student who enjoys that kind of thing. All right, I hope you enjoyed my thoughts on the three easiest Beethoven sonatas. I do have ones that come after this, so hopefully I'll get a video made on the early true sonatas. But if you click the blog post uh, in the description of this video, you'll get all that information there. If you would like me to cover any of these particular movements in a video, let me know in the comments below. If you have questions about teaching Beethoven to intermediate students, leave those questions in the comments as well. I wish you all the best in your teaching.